For more resources, visit rymonline.org. The Local Youth Worker is a daily podcast that's centered on five questions each week. Ranging from the practical to the professional, we're looking for answers to the questions you're asking. Whether you're in full-time, part-time, or even volunteer youth ministry, this podcast is for you. Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, We are talking to Kristen Hatton all this week, author of Get Your Story Straight and FaceTime. And all this week we're specifically talking about her book, FaceTime. And as we were closing out yesterday, uh, we were talking about just how technology changes uh, so often. And so Kristen, the the question for today is, uh, how has the world of social media changed uh, since you wrote your book? Because I know that even in the description of your book, it reads Instagram, Snapchat, WhatsApp, Vine, by the time you read this, there will be new ways to engage with others on social media. So, yeah, it's, it's always changing. Uh, so since last year to now, what, what are some notable changes that you've uh, noticed? Yeah, they, yeah. even that description, I'm like, what, what's app? That may have been obsolete <laughs> by the time the book even you know, was actually mm-hmm. printed. And then Snapchat, even though that was included in that list, that has really been elevated. I feel like Absolutely. at the time I wrote this book, Snapchat was around – and, and students were starting to use it, but it had not become as predominant as it is now. Um, at that time, Instagram was everything. Um, but what I've noticed over the last, mm, probably more than a year, but definitely this year, is Instagram has become much more selective on what students post. Like, I mean, it's always been about posting the perfect picture and creating this, you know, filtered life. But now it's also about having this theme and amazing grid. Mm -hmm. So they want the look of all their photos to kind of line up with each other. So they're not posting as much. I mean, they're still there. I know they're still there because all you have to do is post something on your story and see who's looked at your story, you know that they're still lurking, um, (laughs) scrolling through. They're just not posting because their picture has to not only be perfect, but it just has to line up with their, their grid, if that makes sense. And I don't know, maybe that's more of a girl thing than, than for boys, but, um, And let me jump in on that because I'm going to be the ignorant parent here. Um, I've kind of stepped back a little bit from social media. I just saw a lot of ways in which it wasn't, um, you know, being helpful for me in this season of life. I'm not saying I'm opposed to social media or anything like that. And I'm, you know, going to get back on it in other seasons, but just kind of pulling back for now. So when you talk about the grid, what, what exactly do you mean by that? Again, I'm going to be the, the ignorant parent here. No, no that's it. good. I mean, yeah, it's that because not everyone listening will understand. But when you look at your Instagram account, there's you there's like nine squares that you mm-hmm. see, you know, so you see those most recent pictures. And so a lot of, you know, Instagram bloggers and now teenagers, they want those to all match in a sense. So like if you're kind of going for like a retro look or if you're very clean lines and I mean, it's like the the same filter. I mean, they want it to look good all together. And so they will literally pick their picture based on like how it looks on the grid. Wow. Wow. It all kind of needs to match. Nothing needs to clash and and all that. Wow. It's just, I mean, they would be appalled at mine because I just, (laughs) you know, (laughs) but I noticed that about them. And I I think that that's why they're not posting as much anymore. Um, And I've even seen the hashtag make Instagram casual again because Mm -hmm. it's come like when it first started. And even I think this is so interesting. When Instagram first became popular, my daughter was eighth, ninth grade. And I had some of her friends look back at their very original post from that time. And they like, I mean, the pictures were like blurry and it was like random, like things that nobody would post anymore. Like <laughs> sort of someone's nightstand or like their jogging shoe. I mean, just kind of boring. Mm-hmm. Like no one would ever post that anymore. But like that just shows you how quickly things changed. I mean, that wasn't that many years ago. Yeah. Wow. So, 
So yeah. is that is that when you say they're posting less, it does seem like that does create some more tension and some more pressure. But if there's a hashtag saying keep Instagram casual or make Instagram casual again, is that is that the hope to try to get back to just kind of less pressure and let's just have fun on this? Yes, yes. Instead of like having to create this perfect image, this perfect grid, all that, like just post what makes you happy. Like don't overthink it the way I mean they will spend hours to get the right edit and the filter and you know, debate on which picture and have the perfect pose. I mean, it's Hundreds exhausting. of selfies, all of it, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but if you just, I mean, obviously there's good and bad with social media, but I mean, it can be fine if, if it's in its proper place. So make it casual again, just post <laughs> if you don't, you know. You know. Uh, yeah, yeah. So that's an so, obvious new struggle uh, that, that wasn't around, but it, what are some others that you've noticed? Um, well... With social media specifically or just struggles in general with teenagers? Yeah, I guess just struggles in, in general. I mean, it could be some overlap there with social media, but doesn't have to be. Yeah, I mean, I think social media is a huge contributor to this. But um, as I alluded to in yesterday's um, podcast, just anxiety and depression is just, uh, I mean, it's insane how many kids are struggling with that right now. And I definitely think social media is a big component of that. Mm -hmm. Um but I mean, overwhelming anxiety is the number one reason teenagers get counseling. Mm -hmm. And statistics about teens dealing with this, especially girls, is just continuing to grow. I mean, college campuses, or they can't keep up with the mental health needs. Um, so I just think social media plays a large part in that, as does the pressure that kids are under to achieve at very high levels. Um, so in some sense, anxiety, you know, is woven into FaceTime. Mm -hmm. Um, that would definitely be anxiety and depression is definitely something that I would write more about now. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I mean, that's something what we've talked about it, it just again, citing Twangy's research in iGen. Um, I think she said, you know, depression rates in this iGen generation are four times as high as previous generations. And that's, you know, students born between 1995 to 2012, I believe, uh, give or take. And so, yeah, it seems that, you know, so much, um, and again, we've, we've talked about this, but, um, students just aren't able to escape the pressure. I mean, there's all the pressures of academics and extracurriculars and, and everything uh, going on, but kind of in those, those moments of time where maybe we used to be able to escape it and go into our bedrooms and just kind of relax or whatever, we're filling it with, you know, Instagram and other things where there does just seem to kind of pour a fuel on the fire of this, this pressure to, to constantly perform. Yeah, absolutely. I just learned about this app um, called Moment. Have you ever heard of that one? Mm -hmm, absolutely. I think that, and I, I've just uploaded it, downloaded it, whatever the right word is. Um, <laughs> I haven't started using it, but I think that it would be really an interesting thing for youth leaders to have their kids track how, how much time really are you spending on social media? Because I think a lot of kids, you know, they don't have time to be in God's word or they don't have time for, you know, so they think, but like really to see how much time they're on social media. And then when you look at the statistics of how, you know, hours on social media correlates with the level of anxiety and depression that mm -hmm. kids feel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that I remember, I'm trying to remember who created that app, but I know that he designed it because he was aware that he was not spending as much time with his family. He was just always picking up his phone. And so he created this, this app, um, just to, to monitor, you know, how many times he picked it up during the day as well as how much time he's on it. I want to say, you know, if you make a phone call, um, it doesn't, it doesn't count, but you know, as long as you're kind of looking at the screen or searching, um, it, it counts it there. So yeah, that's something that could be very telling and just, just helpful to kind of help us keep track of how much we are, you know, picking up the phone because I know for sure, uh, I do it constantly. Um, mm -hmm. so yeah, just again, some ways in which technology is constantly changing and we're just needing to be uh, good disciples of the technology we have and continue to grow and, and think about it. And so kind of along those same lines, um, too, I know anyone who's written a book, you always think, okay, I wish I could add this chapter. And, um, and you might've already kind of hit on this a little bit, but do you think if you could add one chapter or a few chapters, what, what are some areas you would like to explore more and write about? Yeah, I would definitely add um, a story or two um, geared toward depression and anxiety. 
I think I might also, and I don't know if this would be a whole new chapter or if I would just weave it into an existing story, but vaping has just become so much more popular. I mean, mm-hmm. I didn't know what a jewel was until, you know, a few months ago. And I think, you know, a lot of parent a jewel for those that don't know, I mean, it is a, a form of a vape or e-cigarette. Um, but kids, because that one looks like a USB drive, <laughs> kids can hide it underneath, you know, teachers' noses. Mm-hmm. Um So, and they think that, you know, that it's harmless. So I would definitely, I don't know, probably weave that in somehow. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I mean, that's something that just seems to have have blown up. I mean, it was definitely, it's been around, you know, for a a few years and it was kind of a big deal. I can remember as we were talking uh, before we recorded just about Walt Mueller and all the work that he does at CPYU. I know that's uh, something he's talked about for a while, but it has just seemed to to really blow up uh, in the past year or so. Um, So, yeah, that's definitely uh, significant. Um, Well, we're about to close out for today. Is there anything else you want to add to any of this, Kristen? I don't think so. It was great. Thank you. All right. Thanks again. Mm Mm-hmm.